Thank you for the introduction and apologies for the long title. I have shortened it for my speech. Um, early versus late metric checking. Um, Overtreating or a missed opportunity. Study was done in New Zealand. New Zealand, as you probably know, has a pastoral uh, dairy industry. It's strictly seasonal. We heard uh, this morning from some of the speakers, uh, Madeline with an excellent presentation first up, um, the consequences of endometritis or um, to dairy cows. Um, in the New Zealand system, the consequences are much more dire. Uh, we mate for only 10 weeks, um, so our cows have an only have a 10-week window to get in calf, and if they're not in calf, they exit the herd and are replaced with a, a younger cow the following year. So the consequences for endometritis in the New Zealand system is much greater. The other thing that's different about the New Zealand system is in my practice, just in my uh, little clinic, um, we run with between four and six dairy vets. Um, I look after about 60,000 dairy cows, 40,000 of those get an endometritis check. Um, all of those cows um, are planned to be mated on the same calendar day of the year. So we've got 40,000 cows to get around and check in just a few weeks. So what we noticed, uh, looking back anecdotally um, with, uh, with our records, is that uh, we would try to go and check these cows for endometritis um, four weeks um, before the planned start of mating. Um, obviously, with that number of cows, I can't get to every single herd exactly four weeks before. So we'd have some herds where we would be there six weeks or seven weeks before mating, and some herds we'd be there only two weeks before mating. And what we saw was that the herds that we went to earlier so the, the herds that we went when the cows uh, were, were, were carved a less period of time, we saw a higher incidence of endometritis. And of course that fits with, uh, with what everyone else has seen around the world. Um, but our question was, um, was going on a herd level, you know, this was at a herd level, going and checking those cows early, finding more cows with endometritis, treating more cows for endometritis, was that giving us a better reproductive outcome at the herd level than waiting for some of these cows to apparently self-cure and go in and look for them at a later stage. Um, just said that we have all these cows to metric check um, in New Zealand, so a very unashamed plug. Anyone who'd like to come and help us um, do that, come and see me after the talk. We use the MetraCheck device. We use the MetraCheck device because it's the only practical way that we can check so many cows so quickly. We, I expect my young vets and, and myself, we go out and we check these cows at about 200 cows an hour. That's how much time we have to do a check, a screening check on these cows to be able to get through the number of cows that we need to be able to get through. So we use the we use the uh, MetraCheck device. We know it's not perfect, but it, is, um, it has been validated as in our situation as being the best test. We're not necessarily finding endometritis. It is a, a, a purulent vaginal discharge, but that's what we have to work with. That's what we can do as clinicians, so that's what we wanted to test. The study design. Now, I presented the first part of this study um, at Buriatrics in Dublin. Um, the study was in two parts. The first one was we just wanted to see the change in metricheck positiveness as days postpartum increased. And then we wanted to see if treating the cows, more cows early, we're treating them with a 500 milligrams of cefepirin, whether treating them early leads to a better outcome at a herd level, like I said before, than leaving them and treating fewer cows late. One of the beautiful things about working in New Zealand and the seasonal calving system is that we have access to very large numbers of cows. So in this study, we put in 20,000 cows. So we had 20,000 cows in this study. So the study design, oh. So the way we work, this is a really important slide to me because um, this is all about blinding and this is how we did the study. We were blinded to this study. What we wanted to do is we wanted to check every cow three times before um, her mating event, or at least go and visit the herd three times. So every cow had three opportunities if she was carved at the first, um, at the first metric check. So we went to the farms 10 weeks before mating. We went there back seven weeks before mating and we went there four weeks mating before mating. And we simply just checked every cow that had calved. 
Now, we did this at 200 cows an hour. We had no idea whether these cows that we were checking, any individual cow, we had no idea how long she'd been carved. We had no idea if she'd been allocated to a treatment or a control group. And we had no idea of what her Metricheck status was at the previous event. We did all this and we went back and, and analysed the results at the end. So we designed, uh, we divided the, the herd into a treatment group and a control group. The treatment group, this was our multiple checking group. This is our intensive treatment group. So what we did there is that every time we checked a cow, if she was positive, she got drafted off. We looked through those drafted off cows. We said, was she carved more than seven days? We didn't do anything to cows carved less than seven days, but we started treatment as early as eight days, which is a lot earlier than what other people had done. And it was certainly, it was off-label use of the drug at the time because the drug was only licensed to be used from 14 days. But that's what we wanted to do. So these, um, these cows that had carved early in the season had up to three opportunities to be checked, where those ones that carved late in the season only had a single opportunity to be checked. In the control half, the standard process, we still checked these cows because we didn't know which ones they were when we were checking. We still checked them, but when we drafted them off, we found they were a control cow. We just recorded the information and let them go. But we did treat them, these control cows, if they were positive at the last check, so four weeks before mating started. So what we were simulating was a multiple check or an early check system versus our traditional four weeks before we start mating check. This was the proportion of metric check positiveness. Um, won't dwell on this, but basically what we found is if we checked a cow before she was 21 days carved, we got about a 20% incidence of metricheck positiveness. If we checked a cow after 35 days carved, we got a four to a 6% in incidence of metricheck positiveness. And in that um, prevailing time, there was a lineal decrease. Um, and just for the power of this study, on each of those day points, um, we had about 700 observations. So I had 700 cows that were carved exactly eight days when we did their first check, and 700 cows that were carved exactly nine days. What we wanted to work out was that, was this change in, in metric check positiveness because these cows were self-curing and truly self-curing, or were they just going subclinical and we couldn't find them anymore? So we had this group of cows that were metric check positive. We treated them. And then we'd gone back three weeks later and checked them again. And we didn't know which ones they were, but we recorded everything and we could go back and have a look. So when we treated a cow that was metricheck positive, metricheck positive, and we went back and checked her three weeks later, 90% of them had got better. And we were pretty proud of ourselves. We thought this is really good. We've done a really good job here. We're really making a difference. And so they were the cows that we called our apparent treatment cures. But I also had a group of cows that we had found to be metricheck positive and we hadn't treated. They were our control cows. And we'd also checked those three weeks later. So if we treated a cow that was positive and checked her three weeks later, we had a 90% cure rate. If we didn't treat the cow that was positive and we went back and checked her later, three weeks later, we had a 90% cure rate which was a little bit hard to explain to the, uh, the drug company that was sponsoring me. It was actually 88% to 90%, and when you put 20,000 cows in a study, you can almost squeeze statistical significance out of that. But the reality was the treatment with this 500 milligrams cefepirin made zero difference to whether the cow was metricheck positive when we checked her three weeks later. But we wanted to know what happened when we pregnancy scanned these cows. The cows that had had an apparent treatment cure, so the cows that got better because of what I did, compared to the cows that had got better despite what I had done, had a 10% better six week in calf rate. And they got in calf eight days earlier. And you notice the p-values um, when you uh, put 20,000 cows into a study. The study was never about what happened at an individual cow level, though. This was always about what was happening at the herd level. 
the half of the herds that were the treatment, half of each herd, so the herds that we did the multiple checking and multiple opportunities to be treated, had a 2.5% higher six-week in calf rate and they got in calf two days earlier. Now, I'm a clinician, not a statistician. I have to do stats with a lot of the work that I do, um, but I need to bring things back into my clinician's head so that firstly, I can explain it to myself, but secondly, so I can explain it to my vets and then to explain it to my farmers. So I run this little sense test in my head and, and most of you guys are gonna say the stats are fine, and, but I have to do this to make it sense of it in my own head. About a quarter of the cows in the study were dirty. Dirty cows got in calf eight days earlier. A quarter of the cows were dirty, so the whole herd should have got in calf two days earlier, and that's exactly what we found. 10% of the cows, uh, sorry, the, the dirty cows had a 10% better six-week in calf rate. A quarter of the cows were dirty. The whole herd got in calf two and a half percent better um, at the six-week in calf rate. So we were pretty pleased that we were actually making a real difference. The economics of that, we did some modelling around that and we found that those cows uh, that were in the uh, treatment half of the herd um, returned an extra 26 to $31 worth of milk um, in the subsequent lactation um, for an extra $7.50 cost. So we had a return on investment of this process of about four to one. Opportunities nationally, we, we, we milk uh, 5 million dairy cows. We've got 5 million people in New Zealand. We milk 5.2 million dairy cows. Um, if, you, uh, if you put that across our national herd, since we released this study uh, two, three years ago now, um, we've seen um, a 40% increase um, in uh, sales of the cefepirin drug um, across all the different uh, um, wholesalers um, on what was a fairly stable average. Um, and we think that that increase of treatment has probably put about $1.8 million worth of export income back into the country. We estimate there's about 900,000 cows that go untreated, and if they were treated, we think we could put back about another 20 or $25 million back into the New Zealand economy by treating those. The AMR question. So I don't know if any of you heard me talk yesterday, but we, uh, we're trying to make very big inroads in our clinic around cutting back the antibiotics that we use. And I spoke yesterday about um, what we're doing with clinical mastitis and the program that we're doing around case-by-case uh, um, -case diagnosis. And we looked at that being able to decrease the amount of antibiotics that we use in New Zealand by about half a million doses. And here I'm talking about increasing it by 900,000 daily doses. I suppose in the defence of that, um, they are first generation KEFs. Um, they're used locally, so they're in, in, infused into the udder, um, and they are only used in a cow that does have a diagnosed infection. Um, and then I, I suppose the other thing, and, and this is a point that I wanted to make about uh, the, the One Health situation. One Health for us is much bigger than just AMR. You know, One Health is, is that intersection of, of people, animals, and the environment. And in New Zealand, we take the environment very, very seriously. We market our, our product, our agricultural products on our clean green image. And um, agriculture is our second biggest export earner in New Zealand um, behind tourism. So that environment uh, in New Zealand is very important. Um, if we were to implement uh, the, the metric checking program early like we have, um, we've estimated that we would need to keep um, 100 to 150,000 less animals um, in, a, in New Zealand. Um, I nearly said Australia then, I'm sorry about that. Um, we would keep uh, nearly uh, 150,000 less um, animals um, and obviously there would be a reduced environmental impact and of course reduced antibiotic use um, from just having fewer animals. Big thank you to the sponsors. Um, you don't get to do a study with 20,000 cows without significant financial support. Um, the sponsors have been very good in, uh, in supporting not only the work but the extension of the work um, and allowing me to have uh, extended this out to, to more than 50 groups of, uh, of veterinarians. In summary, by the time we got to the end and excluded a few cows, we ended up with 15,500 cows. This is a plug that I use for my, my farmers. 15,500 cows don't lie. This is how I try and convince my farmers that they should uh, 
be doing the metro checking program. I understand that on your farm last year you metro checked and you didn't get a good result and your neighbour didn't and he did get a good result but 15,500 cows when we line them up side by side don't lie. Checking cows in that 7 to 21 day postpartum period is the best chance of detecting endometritis with metro check device. And it would appear to us, because of the difference in reproductive results, that untreated cows don't truly self-cure. They just go subclinical, stop producing pus, and we can't find them anymore. And if we introduce this, uh, this uh, program nationally, um, it would bring another $25 million worth of export earnings into New Zealand and potentially be able to mean that we could run 150,000 less animals for the same output. Thank you.